I'm Matt from MTech, and in this video of EFI Explained, we're going to be covering these. The throttle position sensor. We're going to be going over what they are, how they work, their use in electronic fuel injection, how to test them, what to watch out for, and some further technical EFI information regarding these sensors. So first of all, what are they? Well, this is a standard 3-pin Bosch-type throttle position potentiometer. And it's called a potentiometer because it is exactly that, a potential divider or variable resistor. And its purpose is to output a voltage to the ECU to tell the engine management system at what position the driver has the throttle. Now, this is the type you would typically see fitted to the throttle body itself, not a pedal position sensor as used in more modern fly-by-wire systems. So how do they work? Well, for that we need to explain what a potential divider is, and again, this requires a diagram. Okay, so this is a typical potential divider, or a very basic electronic circuit. And what it means is, you have two resistors here, and a voltage input at the top. Now, this would, the, the top input would generally be from the ECU, it would be the voltage reference from the ECU for the sensor system, and it would typically be 5 volts. So we have 5 volts going in. At the other end of this resistor network, we have a ground, or a sensory ground, which may go back to the ECU, or just may go to a common ground on the car. And in the middle, between these two resistors here, we have a tapping point. Now, this would be the signal return, or the throttle position signal, back to the ECU. So we'll just call this signal. Now, with this system here, we have two resistors of a fixed value, let's say 10 kilo ohms each. And in this example, if you haven't already guessed it, the voltage you'll get back to the ECU will be 2.5 volts. But of course, on an engine management system or a throttle position sensor, we can't be using fixed resistors, as we'll always be receiving 2.5 volts back to the ECU. What we need to do is vary these resistances proportionally in relation to the throttle pedal. So what we have inside of this throttle position sensor is the following. And it actually looks exactly like this as well. So we have three pins on the bottom. One, two, and three. We have a center input here, which is actually a wiper arm, which the throttle blade will connect to on the other side of the cable. So as the throttle is opened and closed, this is rotated, this is rotated like this. And inside, we actually have this. We have our center wiper arm, and around the outside, we have a resistive track. As the throttle is opened and closed, this wiper arm moves around this resistive track. And if we add on here our voltage reference of 5 volts from the ECU, our signal out, and our ground connection here, you can see that when the throttle is, in this example, around 90%, it's very close to the 5 volts. So there's, it's closer to the 5 volts than it is the Earth, so therefore we get more of this 5 volts, or in this case, perhaps 4.5 volts back to the ECU. However, if the throttle is closed, then what will typically happen is this wiper would be at the other end of the track, closer to this ground connection, and so what you might find here is 0.2 volts. Moving on from this to test them, you can see it's quite simple. Simply measure the voltage coming out of the middle pin, open and close the throttle, and the voltage should vary accordingly. Of course, the engine will need to be on, as the ECU will need to be powering this 5 volt reference signal for it to work. Another method is to measure the resistance between the centre pin and one of the external pins and check that it goes up and down accordingly as you move the throttle. Typically, these sensors have approximately a 10 kilo ohm track resistance, so set your multimeter to the 20 kilo ohm range. So some things to look out for when using these sensors is that you make sure you wire them correctly. If you wire them back to front, the ECU will think the throttle is wide open when it is in fact closed, and vice versa. And also another thing to check is when using an aftermarket engine management system, you calibrate your open and closed positions. Because the ECU will typically turn this voltage into a 0 to 100%, or perhaps an angle, for the throttle reading within the mapping systems of the ECU. So you need to make sure, because of the sensor adjustment, that when you fit it, you then calibrate the closed voltage and the wide open voltage, 
so that the ECU can then work out its 0 to 100% range. Failure to do this means the ECU may think that the throttle is closed when in fact it's 30% open, and vice versa. Now for some more technical information regarding these sensors. We won't go too far into the EFI side of things as it delves more into the mapping of which further videos will be coming, but the TPS sensor basically follows the, the two main functions we'll describe now. The first is to act like a throttle pump on, on old carburetors, where a rapid opening of the throttle needs to be measured before, for example, manifold pressure or airflow changes, and the ECU needs to spray in a bit of extra fuel to burn this sudden inrush of air. This is called acceleration enrichment. The second thing is it could be used as a main lookup on the fuel table to determine load, and this strategy would be called alpha M. But again, see our other mapping videos as this does get quite complicated from this point forwards. Well, that's all we've got time for on this video, but thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.